I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing that's special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's turn. I uh, want to remind everybody that I'm trying to do these short little videos, and I'm trying to do them in chronological order, so that way I don't want you thinking that all of my videos are going to be about my mother now. But it, this just so happens that this event was kind of important important to me. <laughs> and uh, I want to tell you what happened to my brother Tim when I was about 16. I happened to be out in the yard that day. My middle brother was in the house playing, doing something. And my baby brother, he was out riding his bicycle in the neighborhood. He was about 10 years old at the time. And uh, my dad was out in the yard, he was doing something. My mom was out in the yard, she was doing something. I, I can't remember what they were doing. But anyway, this neighbor, this neighbor boy, he come just running in a dead run uh, into our yard. And he was panting so hard he could hardly speak. He finally got the words out that Tim got hit, hit by a milk truck over on Arlene Street, a, a block over and, and a little ways down. And uh, my mother, she just she just started screaming and uh, and praying at the same time and crying and and she uh, she started to run and my dad yelled at her to get in the car. He drove her down there. Well, she just run and my dad jumped in the car. He drove down there. Now this was we were in the middle of the block, so it was a half a block down. Then it was in block over, and then it was another half a block down on Arlene Street. We lived on Whitney Street in Flint, Michigan at the time. And uh, I wasn't there, but my dad told me this. And he said that when he got there in the car driving now, he said that he, uh, when he got there, my mother, my mother was, she was already there and she was on her knees praying in the ditch. But he said she was not alone because the, there was a person beside her on his knees and he was praying too and this just happened to be the driver of the milk truck the police were there they were jacking up the milk truck off of my brother and he was mangled with his bicycle up under the engine compartment of this milk truck and they got him out and they got him to the hospital and it it was a miracle that he had no broken bones not one broken bone but he had severe head trauma and he was in the hospital for about a week, 10 days, something like that. And the main reason he was in the hospital so long, so long was that they had trouble regulating his body temperature. It would go real high and it would go low and they, they had a terrible time regulating his body temperature. And uh, the uh, some time had, had went by and I uh, I was at home one day and my mother got this letter from the milk company, from the president of the milk company. And basically the letter said that they had done an internal investigation and found that the driver was at fault and they terminated him immediately and all of his benefits and everything. And they put a, a, le a letter in his, in his record as to what happened. Well, my mother, <clears throat> she got on the phone. Now I remind you, this was the man, this was the man that drove the milk truck that ran over my baby brother. She got the president on the phone of that milk company. And she told that president, she says, I want him back to work. I want his record cleared. And I don't want him back to work in a week or a month. She says, I want him back to work tomorrow. And I want his record cleared. She says, because if you don't, she says, I'll get an attorney. She says, and I will sue. That man was back to work the next day, and they cleared his record. My mother. People today, they don't have that kind of faith, that kind of love, and that kind of compassion and forgiveness. And I remind you, this was the man that ran over my baby brother with a milk truck. My mother was, she was my hero. And I, I never even knew it when she was alive. 
she was such an inspiration to me. And I'm sure many of you have mothers that were an inspiration to you. One day, one day, I will see my mother again on the streets of gold. And many of you, many of you will see your mothers as well. I remind you, it's not a faith. It's not a church, not a religion, not a pastor, not a teacher, not even me. But it is the one, the only one, that can save you, me, or anyone, and that's Jesus Christ. To believe, to believe that he was the Son of God, that he walked this earth as God in the flesh, and that he was crucified, shed his blood, his precious blood, and that he died on an old wooden cross, and that he was buried, and on the third day he arose from the, he arose from the grave earth again as God in the flesh and he ascended up to heaven where he now sits on the right hand of the Father awaiting his glorious and triumphant return and it won't be much longer that day is coming that day is coming very very soon so I remind you say say your prayers pray pray hard be diligent in your prayers these are the last days pray hard pray long pray sincere pray in earnest Pray weeping and weeping prayers. Pray. Repent of your sin. Repent of all your sin. All sin known and all sin unknown. Because Satan is in everything these last days. He's in everything. And we pray that we see you on the streets of gold on that day. We keep all of you in our prayers. We love you all so very much. You all are, are a gift from God to us. And we love you all so very much. And we will see you there on that day. God bless you. God keep you. You and yours safe. Amen.